Some mixed election results last week for the NDP. The party fell to fourth place in Parliament after losing 15 seats, but it could have been worse. A late surge in popularity for leader Jagmeet Singh may have helped stem those losses, and now the party could hold the balance of power in a Liberal minority government. So are we looking at a glass half empty or half full? And how stable is Jagmeet Singh's leadership? Matthew Dubé was a Quebec NDP MP who was first elected in 2011. Wayne Stetsky was a BC NDP MP, first elected in 2015. They were both defeated in their respective of writings last week, but they join us here in studio now. Hi to both of you. Hi Thanks very much for coming Hello. in. I appreciate it. Thanks being on your program <laughs> is one of my objectives. Not, these <laughs> not this way, maybe, not right? This way. Not this way. Uh, Mr. Dubay, let, let me start with you. Uh, you, of course, lost in your riding to Mr. Blanchet, the leader of the bloc. I wanted to get in, I want to get in in a second to, you know, the dynamics of the bloc in Quebec, but uh, wh what do you think happened? Well, if, as far as the NDP is concerned, our big challenge, and we had some interesting things to say about pipelines and social license and that sort of thing, but I think ultimately when we talk about child care, when we talk about pharmacare, it's tough to sell those things at the door because child care is a done deal. Pharmacare, while imperfect, we're still ahead of the curve in Quebec. So it's tough when you're talk, speaking to families who either... Uh, are okay with our environmental position or might be looking elsewhere or just don't care about the issue uh, to talk about other issues, right? Because after that, there's sort of a steep uh, decline in what we have to, to, to offer specifically for Quebec. Uh, so I think that was one challenge. And I think more specifically, uh, the bloc really re managed to retake its status as sort of the status quo party. I think there was, uh, I th I'm sure you've talked about it, this here at length, that it was an election where there wasn't really like a specific issue. Certainly the environment came up, but it was hard to find that one narrative trend. And it sort of became a bit of a status quo election. And despite the fact that I've been there for eight years and the same thing for some of my colleagues, the bloc was there for 30 years before that and so I think that that played a bit into people's level of comfort with sort of going back to that in a minority situation which people were telling us at the door they sensed was going to happen because of the polls. Mr. Stetsky, what were you hearing at the door and what what do you think the challenge for the NDP and BC was? So BC was a little different in terms of virtually all of my colleagues were returned with the exception of uh, Finn Donnelly's uh, writing which is very close. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I think the party platform did resonate with British Columbians. Uh, the opposition to the pipeline resonated with British Columbians. And when you look at what the party wanted to do around universal pharmacare, uh, dental care for people making $70,000 or less was really popular. Um, actually getting into appropriate, for, not free, but affordable child care was important, affordable housing. So I, I really thought we had a good platform heading into this particular election. So what do you think the challenge in your riding was? Well, in my riding, it was actually, it's been, it was conservative for 21 years before I won by an, an outstanding 282 votes <laughs> in, in 2015. And when you look at the votes, um, the Liberals traditionally around 6% in my riding. In 2015, they went to 19%. And I think that was uh, some disaffected and unhappy, maybe soft conservatives uh, weren't happy with Stephen Harper and liked Justin's words back then. So what happened in this election is that vote collapsed back for the Liberals, and I think those people went home to the conservatives because uh, the writing traditionally had been conservative. So right. it was uh, not the outcome I wanted, but uh, really happy to have been here for the four years. Let's talk about the future of the party, and specifically, let me zero in on Quebec, Mr. Dubé, because there was a, where the party suffered the, the biggest chunk of its losses, of course, was in Quebec. You were there when it was, on the, it was on the opposite side of things in 2011 and then 2015, where you lost seats but still you know, held a sizable amount. Um, what does the future of the party look like without those seats in Quebec, and how crucial will they be as, as some sort of rebuilding effort occurs? It's going to be a tough uphill battle, there's no doubt about that, and I think that we need to be realistic about that. It's unfortunate because a lot of work went into it, and not only leading up to 2011, but also since then. Um, but I think the big challenge, just to go back to a point I made earlier, is going to be on the policy front. I think uh, Jack Layton and his team, one key thing they did was they had a specific offer for Quebec. Jack and Quebec used to say, the winning conditions for Canada in Quebec. And so I think it's so, sort of something along those lines, where we offer something different from the liberal sort of traditional approach to federalism, and the things that 
that resonated in Quebec. Did but, Mr. Singh kind of try to do that, though? Well, yeah. that was my next point, is I think that started perhaps a little bit too late towards the end of the campaign, and I think there needed to be some meat on the bones as well. I think that it was sort of a, uh, an emotional plea, which certainly resonates. We're, we are very emotional about our politics in Quebec, uh, which is a good thing. I'm not saying that in a, in, a, in a condescending way at all, but I think the issue was there needed to be some policy with that. Uh, and I think that what Jack Layton was proposing at the time through the Sherbrooke Declaration and the different policies the party had adopted was quite novel, but we never really expanded it beyond that after the orange wave, and I think we've kind of suffered from that because we need an offer at the door. So like I said, we did have some stuff about social license with regards to pipelines and things like that, but we were also competing with uh, two, arguably three other parties who were saying the same sort of things, and then we weren't necessarily the only option anymore. Do you think that's kind of the new reality, though? I mean, in so many different issues, it, not even just Quebec, you'll, you know, it, it's like the country was divided between three progressive parties and then one on the right. Well, I think that's the big challenge that we have, is I think that, and that's why a minority parliament will be so interesting, right? Because again, just going back to what, where we've had success in the past is, uh, you know, the liberals are going to be in a position now where they might continue doing this slow burn, progressive politics that didn't necessarily achieve all the objectives people expected of them or wanted in 20, from 2015 to 2019. What can we do about that this time around? What role can we play in this parliament? I think that'll be key to sort of redefining how we stake our claim to those issues and then help rebuild in Quebec as a, as a, as a follow-up to that. What about the leadership of Mr. Singh, Mr. Stetsky? What are, what are your feelings on that? Obviously, a lot of speculation leading into the campaign about low polling numbers, low uh, fundraising numbers, low number of candidates to start out. A very different story starting one week into the campaign with Mr. Singh's response to the emergence of those pictures of Mr. Trudeau in blackface and then his performance in the debates and ultimately the outcome uh, of the election. What's your feelings on his leadership? So I had the pleasure of having Mr. Singh in my writing twice over the last year. And, uh, you know, when you get to know him, and I think that's what has started to happen, is that Canadians have started to get to know who he really is uh, as an individual. Um, everybody that met him in my writing, as I took him through, loved him. Um, they just thought he was a great human being. Uh, they felt very connected. And so I think that's the challenge, and I think we saw that during the, the campaign where as Canadians got to know him better, uh, you started to see his personal ratings go up. So I, I think there's potentially a good future uh, for Mr. Singh. Uh, I think as Canadians get to know him more and more across the country, his approval ratings will go up and the party will go along with that. Do you support his leadership? Mr. Dubé? Absolutely. I would say three things. One, in line with what Wayne's saying, I would say that uh, he, as people got to know him, I think uh, there was a lot of positive points there. I definitely think uh, he ran a great campaign and showed a side of himself that I think is, is good for our politics in Canada. So absolutely, I, I think there's merit to allowing him another chance to further uh, his uh, familiarity with Canadians in that way. Uh, the other, but the only other points I would make, however, is uh, one, I would, say, I would say our party can't be complacent. Uh, I think we can't be self-congratulatory because we survived and are in a position to do some good in a minority parliament. There's a lot of work to do and there's a lot of things that need to be analyzed uh, in a more uh, in-depth way. So that would be one caution to that. Uh, and I would also just say that fundamentally I think leaders need to be given a chance. Uh, we sort of broke from tradition in 2016. I was going to say, do you think it was a mistake with Mr. Mulcair? It, you know, I, I don't want to revisit that too much, but I, th I think ultimately, you know, I think people need to have a chance to sort of recalibrate after an election. I think the one and done, win it at all cost mentality is is not necessarily helpful for creating that familiarity with voters. And even as a Quebec MP in Quebec, where a lot of people were sort of uh, saying that Jagmeet had a, a, a high, a steep hill to climb because of the, you know, the commentary on different perceptions that may or may not exist. Uh, he made an enormous amount of progress. There's a very positive feeling about it. It didn't, and which brings me to my third point, which is I think we need to find a way to channel that, uh, you know, that interest that Canadians have in his leadership into votes, which we might not necessarily have, well, we didn't do this time. Right. But I think, you know, you look at places like Toronto and stuff where there's obviously a great interest for what he represents for our politics, making sure that people who are interested in that actually get out to vote. And I think that's the next step that we need to give him a chance to achieve and his team as well. Okay, I have to leave it there. But thank you very much to both of you for making time. Thanks to Mr. Stetsky and Mr. Dubé. Best of luck in the future. Hope we'll, we'll see you back on the power panel, I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to One both hopes. of you.
Former NDP MPs have had a week to think about what went wrong in the election. Jagmeet Singh's party lost 15 seats and was almost completely wiped out of Quebec. So how tenuous is Mr. Singh's hold on the NDP leadership? And what about the fortunes of Andrew Scheer and others? We're back with the power panel. Stockwell, Brad, Laura and Yolan. Brad, I'll start with you. I thought Mr. Dubé's comments were uh, really thoughtful and in particular he hit on a couple of things that, that jumped out at me. The first being that uh, he noticed what I think a lot of us did, was, which was that there was an increased sort of positive sentiment about Mr. Singh and interest in what, what he stands for and what he's about, but that it didn't translate into votes in the end. And I'm wondering what you think about how the party should address that going forward. Yeah, and I think, I think he was very thoughtful, and, and as well, Wayne was, was very good. I thought it was an excellent interview. I think he's, he's right in terms, both gentlemen were right, in terms of the opinion that Canadians had, they went into this election campaign not knowing anything about Mr. Singh, uh, but the more they got to know him, the more they liked him. That's a good, obviously that's a better place to be in than the opposite, which I think Mr. Scheer uh, is, is in, but let's, uh, let's talk about Mr. Singh more. Uh, Please, yes. <laughs> when, when, when Jack Layton's first election campaign, 2004, he increased the vote by a million, but only the seat count by five. Uh, and you have to kind of look under the surface to find out, is there room for growth? Do you have runway uh, for improvements? The second aspect is that we're in a minority. And minorities provide opposition parties, especially if you hold the balance of power, which Mr. Singh and the NDP do now, uh, to really showcase uh, their ability to get things done in, in, in Parliament much more readily than, than in a majority. So Mr. Layton for uh, about 120 days and then Mr. Mulcair uh, afterwards, uh, you know, Mr. Mulcair was very good in the House, but it was very difficult to break out of the Ottawa bubble to show Canadians what you could do. So I, I think that, well, and it'll be up to the membership, obviously, in due time, but I submit that the, that the party fell in love with Mr. Singh during this election campaign. There was a very emotion, I think, emotional attachment. I went to a number of events uh, throughout the country, and you can see that the membership really liked him. It'd be interesting to see what happens at convention when at each convention we have a leadership review. Uh, but I think I think that the membership will give him a uh, runway. The key for Mr. Singh to show what he can do and accomplish in this minority parliament. If he goes invisible, that'll be more difficult. Is he? If he's front and center and and using his balance of power to get good things done in this parliament, I think uh, the membership will reward him uh, with another stab at uh, the next election. Yolan, Mr. Dubé also had a few things to say, partic in particular about Quebec, and that was that uh, a lot of the central policies, like for example, pharmacare or childcare, didn't really resonate at the door in his province. Uh, would you agree with that assessment? What do you think of the, the platform that they put forward beyond just Mr. Singh's sort of personal... Well, I think he, yeah. as much as uh, I'll agree with, with Brad with respect to his charisma and his ability to speak French um, in the French debates, certainly um, better than a lot of people expected, better than Andrew Scheer did. These are things that helped him. But he did stumble during the campaign on a number of issues, notably when he came to Quebec and said, oh, I want to be able to, with the author of, of, of pipelines give Quebec uh, a veto and then he wasn't able to really explain that and on Bill 21 he kind of went back and forth so I think if he's going to go for the long run beyond the charisma he's going to have to as Brad alluded to he's going to have to um, uh, bring the goods and show how he's going to be able to um, um, uh, uh, bring things for for the party but specifically in Quebec and also I mean I do think he does have some bridges to build back in Quebec. I can't overstate how um, people didn't appreciate a, certainly those MPs that lost their seats here in Quebec seeing Mr. Singh dancing um, obviously because he exceeded expectations from the beginning of the campaign as they lost their seats. That wasn't appreciated here. So while he did do better than he um, initially a, a lot of people uh, expected at the beginning of the campaign, he's got a lot of work ahead of him if he wants to be able to rebuild the party for the long term. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.